Hello, welcome to another great episode of Royal Black and Elite. I'm Lady T, your lecturer and social historian. I want to give a shout out to my city for recognizing the work of our organization in the realm of etiquette and black history. I also want to thank the city of DeSoto, um, where we recently did our Royal Black and Elite exhibit. Remember, if you need an exhibit in your city or you want to talk about this subject, hit me down below. I have all the information down there. And then also, thank you because the subscriptions, the likes, all of it is just rising every day. I cannot be more grateful. So remember to like, share, and subscribe if you like the information you're learning here. Today, is going to be a fantastic episode as we introduce to you the black Mozart and really I'm starting to think he was Mozart because his body of work in classical music is legendary Joseph Malone Chevalier de St. George's was a master classical music composer and conductor who was reportedly the son of an African Senegalese slave woman named Anne, also known as Nanan, and a wealthy white plantation owner named Georges D. Ballone St. Georges. He actually held the title of Gentleman of the King's Chamber, which means he had special access to the King's home. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to call him Montessor Joseph because his name is so long. But he was born on December 25th, 1745, in the French colony of Guadeloupe in the Caribbean. Now, Monsignor Joseph was deeply loved by his father, who moved him to France at the age of five to be educated. When he was 10, records indicate that his mother and father traveled together on a train called the El Amiable Rose in 1755. They went to, to France to visit Monsignor Joseph, and it is reported they lived together in France for a time before Boulogne returned back to the Caribbean, back to his wife and children. During that time, it was common, uh, especially in the Caribbean and islands um, where slavery was rampant because of the sugar plantations for white slave owners to have children with the black slaves. However, this story is different in that the white slave owner truly loved the woman and his son and it also showed at the end of his life. And him riding in the public was just another indication of how he felt for Monsignor Joseph and his mother. And him living together as a family with his father and mother in France Oddly enough, wasn't that strange because, again, there were a lot of situations where white slaveholders who were French did have children in these colonies. By the time Monsignor Joseph was only 13 years old, he began his training to become a personal bodyguard or a chevalier to the king. His father paid for this and other luxuries while they lived there in Paris. The Montessor also became a master swordsman during his military training, beating the French master Alexandre Picard at only 15 years old. Now this was after Picard insulted his African heritage and called him a mulatto, a name used to describe mixed race people during that time. His father was so proud of him that he brought him a horse and a buggy. Now, in today's term, that would be like buying your kid a Lamborghini. So he's very proud, and again, that shows how this man felt about Joseph and his mother. In 1766, when Sir Joseph was 21 years old, he graduated from the Royal Polytechnic Academy, and he immediately was appointed as an officer in the King's Bodyguard. And that is what granted him the title of Chevalier. Now reports came out that Montessor Joseph was quite the cad, dashing, they said he dressed well, and he was invited to all the parties. The ladies absolutely loved him. Now Netflix show Bridgerton, it took a page from the life of the Montessor, more the cad part though, but not his a tremendous musical ability. 
Now between the horseback riding and the fencing and all that he was learning to do, he also learned how to write and play classical music. However, there is no record of his formal training. Now there were numerous um, rumors back then about his training, like some said his father's estate planner, his name was Platon, trained him, and then some say two great conductors named Leclerc and Lolly trained him, but there is no real clear record that exists. All we know is by 1769, Montessor Joseph played the violin in public in front of an audience for the first time. His musical career immediately took off. It is believed he even played for Marie Antoinette, the French queen who years later literally uh, lost her head during the French Revolution. Now, just as his classical music career was taking off, his father passed in 1774, leaving him an estate of $8,000, which would be perhaps around $300,000 today. He also reportedly left some money to Joseph's mother, uh, but there are some rumors that say that he didn't. Um, given the closeness of the relationship, however, I do kind of lean to that he probably left her a little something. Oddly, however, in 1781, only seven years later, the Montessor was kind of broke. He was experiencing financial hardship, and he had quickly run through his inheritance, and he was forced to live at a Masonic Lodge. Now, these financial problems couldn't have come at a worse time. Because in 1789, the French began to pass anti-black laws that deeply affected the Montessor and his mom. So what he decided to do was he joined the service as a colonel in the first black region in Europe. It was called the Legion of the St. Georges. And they were successful too. He led them and he did very well. But despite of him doing well in his stellar career, he couldn't get the music out of his mind. And he continued to work on his music, which angered the military and they actually threw him out. But not only threw him out, but they wrongfully imprisoned him for 18 months. Now after his release, he tried to re-enlist in the service, but he was denied. So after he was denied, he went back to what he was so good at and what he loved to do. And he returned to composing and playing music until he passed away. I was able to clip off one of his last operas. It's called The Anonymous Lover. Here's a little snippet of his music. To imagine, this man went on to write six operas, eight symphonies, and more than 12 violin concertos. In 2020, the Los Angeles Opera and the Colburn School streamed his only surviving opera, and we just heard a little bit of music from that. The Montessor also has a plaque and a whole memorial there in Paris, France. So here you see his bust, and here is the plaque. There are no records of the Montessori ever being married or having any children. So I do believe he lived out uh, the rest of his days as a single man, kind of living out his wild oats. And he did kind of die young at the age of 54 years old. Did you know we had a black Mozart or someone during that time in that century that did such beautiful music and was so well known? I hope you enjoyed his story. Now remember to press like, subscribe, and share as we continue to tell these stories. And remember, go out to our merch store. Here you can buy the Royal Black and Elite t-shirt and our book you can find on Amazon. I left all the links in the description. I thank you all for joining me and for caring about black history. And I hope that this information is enlightening for you. Maybe you didn't know that we had our first black Mozart and so many of the other stories that shared on my channel. Be sure to click on them and learn more about the Royal Black and Elite. I've been your host, Lady Trinette Wilson. 
Please join me again for another great episode, and I hope you have a wonderful day.